All right, motorized bike enthusiasts, welcome to 4.30 in the morning. We are taking off this broken thumb throttle. And we are replacing it with this not so broken thumb throttle, which also happens to have a dual brake lever. Now it has two other things uh, which are unique. It has a stoplight switch and it has this button. This button doesn't appear to do anything. I don't see a latching mechanism. So perhaps it's designed to go with a certain model of ATV, pit bike, dirt bike. Or... Yeah, okay, that's gonna work. We'll go ahead and mount it to the handlebars. It's a tight fit. I'm gonna sand this down a bit. Well, I made these cables custom length for the dual brake lever that we were using. And they are unfortunately just a little bit too short. I guess it is set up to use a barrel like this, but with the cable coming out of this end. Because it sits in here and there's a little ledge that works as a stopper. Some of the reviews on this said that what uh, they did was simply just grind this into kind of a circle. I will probably end up doing that just to make sure this this can't like pop out somehow. See if I can reuse this one for the front. Clean it up. This one's a little frayed. Oh, that doesn't have an end. Old throttle cable. Yep, it's a little rusty. Okay, find my new cables. I organize stuff and the problem with organizing stuff is you forget where you put stuff because it's organized. There they are. Okay, looks like we got four to work with. Got all our caps. Where are our sleeves? Oh, right, I didn't buy sleeves. Okay, I'm gonna have to find some good sleeves in the uh, spare parts box. It's definitely made for something more substantial. These slots are very big definitely too small all right well, we'll just make some kind of a spacer all right we're moving on to the rear wheel we're going to see if we can salvage this or if we need to outright replace it she's definitely loose but we knew that what i did notice while i was taking the bike off the frame is it looks like there's a bit of a bulge in the coaster brake arm yeah, look at that. The the cone nut, this guy right here, it just dug into the coaster brake arm. Whoa. Okay. So this was our failure point. All right. We are just about out of light, but it's time to go to work. Uh, until we get a new wheel on here we absolutely cannot use the coaster brake or it's just going to loosen up the whole hub but we got the upgraded dual brake lever with the new thumb throttle integrated let it warm up for a second Smaller than a 14? Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding. So we bent this seat on the trail uh, in the last video when we had the coaster brake issue. The good news is I don't think we destroyed it. We snapped this little plastic coupler, but I don't think that really does anything. Uh, but we landed on it pretty hard, so this is all bent in. And uh, I think with a wrench and a hammer we can uh, bend it back out the look might not go with the bike but it's a very comfortable seat
So what is going on guys? It is a beautiful morning once again on the motorized bike. We're out here. slower but it just feels a lot smoother it's still got really good low end pool so that's also another big bonus chilly just a little chilly so I'm warming up the legs Saturday morning on the motorized bike. I cannot complain about anything right now. This is perfect. And when my legs get cold, I just stand up, stop the bike, and it's it's literally like having a little propane heater underneath me. <laughs> it's warm, it feels really good. <laughs> Alright, guys, so just to clarify, what we did and our conclusion so far is I took the keyway and I basically ground it down about one millimeter, just a little bit. Uh, put it back in, put the magnet back in, and that gave me more room to wiggle the magnet back and forth. I tried advancing the timing, that made it worse, like a lot worse. And then I tried retarding the timing, and that's where we are now, and it's running much, much smoother, it's not missing nearly as much, but we did lose some top end speed. So that's where we are right now, a sacrifice, but I'm just, I really like how the motor is running for cruising speed. Uh, it feels like it has a little more low end pull. So some of you probably want to know how many degrees I retarded the timing. Well, you know I don't know that. Like, you literally know I just turned it back a little bit. 
and then tried it. <laughs> and that's where we are now. Here's the thing. At the time, I wasn't looking to get an exact measurement or peak performance. I was just trying to see if there was an improvement or if it got worse. Now that we know there was an improvement for the way I like to ride, we can try tweaking it. So. Founded in 1908, that's what the sign said. I want to ring the bell. I'm gonna have to come back, maybe with the Path Dragon. I might try it on this, but it's rigid and not really meant for, you know, rough stuff. But ever since we turned down this highway, there has been a side road the whole way. from the house I actually wasn't planning to come all the way up here I just started going and then kept going and then I was here <laughs> that's a swift looking bike thank you that's a long way to go that's 22 miles is that how far it is yeah I actually brought a little bit of gas we might be able to fire that one up I haven't been able to get it going but it's probably something like Oh, that, I'm, I'm sure that carburetor is good and gummed up. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's more, <laughs> more the, the operator. I'm going to pull it out into the light. Okay. This is the second bike I ever built. It's a Kent something. And I ended up just leaving it here. Uh, figured it'd come in handy if we wanted to ride around these side roads. Well, we ended up just parking it. I can't remember exactly how long it's been here. It's definitely been over a year. I'll go back and look at the last video I uploaded with my dad riding it, because I know that's when I dropped it off. So it's been this long. Anyways, uh, it turns out that the fuel line on it has shrunken and it won't connect the carburetor to the tank. It's also really, really stiff, but pretty much useless. I was opening up this little pouch just to see what goodies I left in here. Turns out we got a tire repair kit and some extra fuel line. Unfortunately, it's not actually fuel line. It's windshield washer vacuum tubing. 
Uh, I, I, you got a bicycle pump with you? I do. Oh, you can pump that front tire. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anyways, at least this will work just to test it, even if it's gonna like fall apart in a couple months. I've never opened this motor before. I have no idea what it looks like inside. Just a little bit, because I still need to get home. Yay, hand pump time. Let's see if it runs. Fuel on, choke on. I'm gonna use the priming bulb for the first time in my life. This bike has a comfortable seat, but terrible handlebars. Oh, but it's got gears, I forgot. Oh, that's so nice. That low gear. Oh! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Ooh, it's quiet. I forgot how quiet this bike was. There ain't been nothing in her for a while. This is the first time this motor's ever seen 32 to 1 synthetic. <laughs> Remember, don't die. It's always important not to die. I think the last time he rode a bike was when we rode the bike together. But then how, how old is that bike, is that? Uh, it's about three years old, I think. It's a new bike. It's got kind of an old look to it. It seems to be scary. It's easy to forget how to ride one. Yeah. It's, it's too high. And you can't tell any damage at all. All right, Dad, I'm out of here. sprocket my drive sprocket screws which obviously affects our clutch so we lost one of them one of the short ones so I'm repositioning the remaining short one to give us as much bite on the clutch as possible so we had a good little adventure today hope you guys enjoyed it we learned a few things about retarding the timing on the YD100 it definitely smooths out the motor a bit makes it a bit quieter as well we uh, got rid of a lot of the four stroking in the low RPM range. Mid RPM range still runs like crap. High RPM range runs nice and smooth. Doesn't have quite as much top end though. We lost about three to four miles an hour. But I think we might be able to get a sweet spot. I'm gonna keep playing with the ignition timing a little bit. See what we can find out. 
but no definitive answer right now if it's going to be a good thing in the long run, a bad thing, or just nothing. Oh, she is burning through that back tire quick.